we're gonna do uh, our our tried and chewed uh, segment called "If I Had Made It," and this is about sh- uh, movies that were probably maybe really super great or maybe super terrible, and we just kind of want to remake it because we want to be the directors of these things and maybe save it or destroy it even more in the process, like I did with Super Mario Brothers back in episode like two or three. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a weird one. That was a weird one. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go first on this. Uh, I actually, so this is, this one isn't technically a if I made it. This is more of a I want to make it, uh, <laughs> and I want to make Shaq Fu the movie. I want, <laughs> I want this what? so yes, I want Shaq Fu the movie. For those what who are that? okay, so Shaq Fu. For those who don't know, this is a video game, uh, 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 a Sega Genesis game, if I'm not mistaken, way back in the '90s where Shaq Fu is doing Kung Fu against a bunch of bad guys. The game was absolutely awful, but I loved the premise and so did everyone else. It was like the biggest game of that year and everyone hated it. And I just love the idea of Shaq doing Kung Fu, but with, but like also like using a basketball with like spikes as a weapon, very like Mad Max style. You know, <laughs> I just imagine this big motherfucker just like doing like a roundhouse kick with a ball in hand, and just throw it into people's faces. I kind of want this. This sounds awesome. No, do I will want... raise you. Oh, continue. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, do you want like actual Shaq in it? Like old Shaq now? Like Shaft? Can, like Samuel Jackson came back for old Shaft? So, or here... are you getting like another giant monster person that's as big as Shaq? We're gonna we're actually gonna use the um, Batman Beyond plot to do this. It's old ass Shaq, new ass uh, basketball player. Uh, let's say I don't know who, who's new who's new in the world. Like uh, maybe like Lynn or something, and, <laughs> which would be a really interesting dynamic to say the least. And so, <laughs> and so Lynn's just like teach me a way. Uh, there it's not i know what you're thinking it's not what you think but i love the idea of, of like Shaq just like trading this dude to do like basketball kung fu and <laughs> i think i think this plot line has so much water for it like i it would be just such an entertaining time and i i, I want to make this so bad if if uh shack lynn one of you two or any basketball player who's got connects listening to this make this happen for me please this is what i want in the world <laughs> should be produced by jackie chan he knows kung fu and comedy oh my god i didn't even think of that that would be amazing and he could be the bad guy jackie chan yeah. is the bad guy playing basketball but also doing kung fu yes <laughs> uh I hate, I hate you i hate you, you love it you <laughs> love it that's why you hate me <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. I i feel zero bad about this concept i'm gonna kickstart the crap out of it everyone's gonna buy into it i'm gonna win this one. <laughs> oh my goodness that that's all i got for this that, i mean that just that plot that plot and premise alone that is a hundred million dollar movie right there <laughs> every time i go to office depot now i see shaq's poster he's like the the guy for office depot now so you walk in there you're like i need a stapler and there's shaq standing there with a basketball in your face going i guess i'm gonna buy this too I when i think of printer cartridges i think of shack <laughs> dude shack shack is like the kiss of the basketball world he'll put his face on pretty much anything the general <laughs> buy hey, some uh, papa john's branches too <laughs> He's done a lot of things. I think, uh, although I, he was in a movie, if y'all don't remember, Kazam, Kazam, if you didn't see oh, it, Hip Hop Genie, it was, it was, it was more entertaining than it had any business being. We talked about it because we talked about the the Mandala effect, didn't we? And about how Shazam and all that was how, or the the mix up and the uh, the Sinbad Genie. Movie. <laughs> if it if it wasn't objectively a terrible movie, like it's so bad it's good, I would probably put it as a get wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's what i got what do you got for us uh zach um so i would like to do so this is another one i guess like it's not really a remake it's more of a if i could make it kind of thing i want to make a like a horror comedy kind of thing but a live action invader zim movie 
um, where Invader Zim isn't just like a kind of comedic, silly, cartoonish thing, but more of this like haunting, more realistic, like alien creature that is like trying to live amongst us, but like secretly trying to take over a neighborhood. And so, I, but I think I, you could do it as like a, like a, a, like a young, like teen, early twenties, like horror movie and make it sort of like a, like a survival horror slasher film, but where Invader Zim is just like ruthlessly murdering like a group of friends, like trying to like take over a neighborhood. Uh, <laughs> I was really, I just want to see Zim and Squee as real people and see what kind of fucked up weird relationship you can make out of that. So it's kind of like, uh, it would be like Invader Z and Zim meets like Johnny the Homicidal Maniac, basically. 100%. I mean, well, I think they're, aren't they done by the same? Yeah. Same yeah, they're done yeah. by the same guy. And Johnny the Homicidal Maniac was pretty dark at times, but also very, like, funny, cynical. <laughs> very dark. Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. Maniac. Have you ever read that? Yes. I, yes. It was. That's another. That's a get wrecked right emo. there. Peak emo. Peak emo right there. <laughs> oh, and then in your <laughs> movie, Zach. That... It's be cool to have that kind of like bring more of like a slasher film film mentality to it um so it could still be charming with like those kind of characters but at the same time you can make it like really violent and cool and like a cool like kind of almost b movie slasher movie with this little alien taking over neighborhood so would your main character be dib trying to like convince everyone that this newcomer is trying to kill everyone <laughs> ah, yeah. it could probably be that or like somebody befriends yeah, did the did the assistant, and then but then like gets involved and like maybe like take or gets captured or some shit, and then it's more of like an escape film. Uh, but because yeah, I don't, I like I'd have to actually like write something up as to how it would move along. I just want to see Zim as like a slasher villain rather than like a comedic sort of punchline. Okay, uh, Brian, what would you have made if you had made it? I mean, you got my wheels turning with your idea. So, I mean, what if we had a, a flip on the movie Hitch, but instead it's a writer trying to get the script of Kazam to Shaq? <laughs> <laughs> Love. That's kind of fun. Oh, my God. That's I, so funny. I, think, I think it's a little bit of a, you know, uh, a little bit of, you know, talking points here and a few for some of the stuff I can talk about, but I could just see like that entire process of like how, you know, um uh sam the writer's trying to get you know shack to read his uh his script he's got written here about you know him being a uh, a genie in the lamp basically so i can <laughs> I, I i just see the pitch meeting now just like okay shack you genie in a lamp but also doing hip-hop and also it rains junk food i imagine he i imagine that's what the pitch actually was and he was like <laughs> well, i'm in i'm in and imagine like everyone else in the room so there's like producers and studio people and everyone's just like what the fuck are you talking about and Shaq's like money <laughs> money <laughs> Shaq's like I'll produce this if I have to but I'm doing it yeah. and he all probably was like junk food raining doing- from the sky sold <laughs> oh actually fun fact about this movie though um one of my mentors actually worked on it as the special effects guy he's the one who hooked up the boom box to do the the, the fush Thing. he's the one who made it rain like he he was like we spent about two thousand dollars of fast food and we hooked it up to the lighting grid and it just all started like falling down from the sky uh, uh so yeah. basically you're saying that your one of your mentors is the reason that shack djs i wonder what's next for sam after this <laughs> well actually um he he's doing really well for himself he he uh he did uh star wars uh the special effects for that he's done pirates of the caribbean like he he did that he got to start there man everyone gets to start somewhere <laughs> <laughs> uh what about you shannon what would you have made if you had made it um so what i want to see is a live action danny phantom series um I I, I love that but I mean my one thing is because it's teeny bobber I don't want it to turn into a Riverdale style show because uh, no 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 because I feel like you have to make sure the CW doesn't get their fingers on it like at all like <laughs> get it out of its grasp also I think like a hill to die on today <laughs> yeah CW needs to stop um but I feel like I'm trying to think maybe 
because uh, it's a Nickelodeon show and since I sold like Avatar and Netflix I don't want Netflix touching it either but Netflix might well 100% will do a better job than CW but it just <laughs> like that's a really low bar to set but um I kind of want to do a live action Danny Phantom Phantom while they're in college though so not like a reboot of it it would be post graduating high school Danny in college if he's still with Sam Tucker's still there how the ghost zone and everything is affecting him in his uh budding adult life type of thing so aged up a little bit more that was actually my first thought when you said that is like it'd be kind of rad to do like a Danny Phantom who's been doing it a long time and his days mm-hmm. like older sort of jaded about it yeah. And maybe it's like gotten a little darker and meaner about it. Yeah. Um, and it's he aged sort of like the enemy's age is the same as like like Batman mentality. Like the mm-hmm. better he gets, the better the bad guys get. And so now you have more of like a, a an adult themed like like you can have more more intense issues. Like as an adult has just has more shit to deal with. And I think that'd be super cool. I think that's an awesome idea. Yeah, I definitely also want to see what happens with his older sister, too. Because, like, at first she was just like, oh, I don't like the ghost hunting stuff. But by, like, the last season, she was, like, all in with it. So, like, is he a ghost hunter? Has he decided to go away to school and just be like, peace out? Like, I don't want to do ghost stuff. And then ghost stuff comes and finds him, like, at the beginning of Supernatural. You know, like, reluctant Sam. Like, who knows? (laughs) But, yeah. I don't know. That'd be cool. These are all quite outstanding. I, I like this. It's kind of like raised the bar, I think, for, <laughs> for this segment. Um, very cool. I think we're gonna move on to our to 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 one of our our, our personal favorites, which is celebrity character sheets. Uh, for all you Dungeons and Dragons enthusiasts out there, this is where uh, we go ahead and make character sheets for people in the world, whether they're historic or or simply just famous for being famous sake um and this are week we're guy with us brian what's that are you a D guy with us I- i'm gonna leave it to the experts on this okay <laughs> this is asking. we did this with somebody and they were like uh i don't fucking know anything about dnd <laughs> uh, i think you have a sword <laughs> Basically, if you know how to build a world, you can build a character sheet. It it is easier than it sounds, I promise. Uh, But for this week, we're going to be doing a person that everyone's pretty much familiar with at this point, and that would be Mr. Elon Musk. Uh, I picked picked him because I think he's going to be uniquely challenging in terms of who the fuck is this guy in this world? Uh, Artificer? That's what I was thinking right away, but everything else is kind of like... I think he's a chaotic neutral... A chaotic neutral? Um, I'd go chaotic neutral for sure. Well, let, let's. What would you? What do we do first? Do you want to pick out like class and, and or subclass, and then go into like? Well, let, let's go into class. I mean, I think you're ultimately right with an artificer, but I feel like he also has like some type of other other thing, like because he's, he's an alchemist. <laughs> well, they, they so the alchemist fits in the new artificer. Um, class. Okay now um but i would say i I mean if you do anything i'd go like like because he could do like artificer clearly because he he builds gadgets and makes shit like that's kind of their shtick but also because he's like a sort of a corporate overlord like he could be like a mastermind rogue and like run sort of like a maybe like an empire of like spies and sorts so he uses his like corporate assets to like while he builds all these gadgets he might also be like a sort of like rogue mastermind leader that's like uh that's running 